everyone welcome back to the channel welcome back to yet another video in today's video we are going to go over how you can use ista d to diagnose and fix your car now ista d is part of bmw's application called ista plus which ista plus is made up of two different programs ista d which is used for diagnostics and ista p which is used for programming so if you guys don't know what ista d is essentially it's BMW's diagnostic computer. It also contains all of the service manuals for things like torque specs, different tightening procedures, and how to basically fix and repair these cars. It's a very advanced program. It can do a lot. There's also another program called ISTA-P, but in today's video, we are going to be focusing on ISTA-D. It's more than just a way of diagnosing your car. It's a whole advanced program made specifically for BMW dealerships. Unfortunately, I cannot show you guys how to get this program. I've made a video and it was taken down, but message me on Instagram or email me and I'll see what I can do to help you out. So first things first, this is what it looks like when you load it up. There's different versions. Um, this is one of the newer versions, but one of the most important things I guess you should know is how you're making a connection. So I should also mention ISTA D works on a wide variety of cars. It works from cars, I think, all the way from like the E36 all the way up to B BMW's new generation of cars. So I use it on my E46 and I also use it on my F10. However, these cars communicate in very different ways. So that's why we have to ensure and see which way we have it configured. So right now we have it configured to use the Itibis INI file. And basically this is to use your KDCAN cable and this would be a cable that you'd want to use on an E46. So basically anywhere from E46, E90, E60, any of the E series, you're going to want to be using a KDCAN cable or even an ICOM cable, which BMW is at your dealer. However, if you're using something like an F or G series, you're going to need to use what's called an ENET cable. And that's where we're going to use ENET direct connection slash ICOM. We're going to leave it for here for now. Once I go in the car, we'll be showing you on my F10, so we will switch it to a direct connection. We'll just press OK. But I want to show you that there's a lot of features that you can do before even connecting to the car, and then we'll jump out in the car. So let's throw in my VIN. In this case, I will be using my E46. But you do have to type in the full VIN on the older versions of ISTA. You didn't need to, so let's click Open Operation. It's going to read everything about the car. Essentially, it's just decoding the VIN right now because my car isn't actually plugged into anything. So let's let this read. All right, so now that it read everything, we can see my VIN. Obviously, we don't know the mileage because I just threw in a VIN. We can see it's rear-wheel drive, production date. See all sorts of great stuff. We can see the vehicle's equipment. Nothing showing up right now, which is odd. I, maybe it doesn't do it for the older cars. I know my F10 shows. Under control unit is where we'd see all the codes, and under control unit list is where we'd see the list of all the faults. But unfortunately, right now, it's just unknown. It's not reading anything. It's just looking for the VIN. And then under here, we can go under vehicle management. And this is where we can see everything about the car if you're looking at stuff to fix it. So let's say we're taking a look at the clutch. We can click on clutch and then we can click on clutch check. And then it will look, we can look at the bleeding procedure of the hydraulic system. So we can click on that. And bam, we can see the whole bleeding procedure, all the required tools, all the little details that are required. We can even see, like I said, the torque spec. So if we click on this, it will take us here. And then we can look depending on what car we have and what specific bolt. So we can see stuff like the clutch line to clutch slave cylinder. And then under here, we can see E46. E46 has its own torque spec. So it's really cool that we can see stuff like that. We can close this out. And there's other stuff like clutch disc plate. And then we can click overview of tightening. So this is literally whenever I'm doing a job, this is where I get all my torque specs. So I know they're 100% right. Clutch the flywheel when I was doing my clutch job on my E46, I went right in here and found everything that I needed. So literally anything you're trying to do is usually in these guides. It's pretty good. There's also a search feature so you can search what you're looking for. Then under here we go under troubleshooting. This kind of goes back to if you have any faults the car seeing, we can check them and then we can calculate a test plan of what things to check. So when something's not working, we can go under here and then click calculate test plan and it'll tell you things to check like check ground, check connectors, check this. It'll check it'll be able to tell you voltage of different things. It's really, really cool. Like I said, it's a very, very advanced program. 
under here we have our service functions so we have stuff that we can carry out so if we need to do like a battery replacement ista d is good for that or if you're replacing injectors anything like that it's all going to be in here and yeah like i said it's super advanced there's so much to play with i wouldn't really be scared of ista d it's not a scary program at all it's very helpful i've yet to see someone brick something because of this it's a very safe program i'm not saying you can't but like i said it is a very safe program but again i'm taking no liability when using this because this is dealer software it is very very powerful the things that you can do with it back over here if you're looking to update the software of your modules here's where is the p can be integrated so it just basically says is the p is what you're going to use for this same thing if you're going to replace a control unit is the p is what you're going to use and stuff like that to modify the vehicle so that's everything inside of is the d that i can show you till we connect to my car so let's go outside connect to my car and then we'll read the codes and kind of go through all the different modules show you the control tree because that looks really really cool so all right so we are getting ready to set up the computer with ista to communicate to the car and like i should mention i am using my wireless mod bmw enet cable it's the only adapter i trust when coding my car or programming or diagnosing so we're going to go up here we're going to click on the little gear and my apologies in the video earlier it's actually should be under enet local area network and then we can go under readout vehicle data and we can do a complete identification. If you don't know if your connection is set up correctly, you can just do identify without vehicle test. And that will just basically pull your VIN, pull, pull the data that we pulled earlier in the mileage, but it won't actually read the modules. Right now we are currently reading the whole car, reading all the modules. Another thing I should mention is when I'm doing this, my car is in position two. You can do it while the car is running, but I have my headlights off, I have my HVAC off. And if you are going to do any programming or any large anything large inside of ISTA, which nothing really is, but if you're gonna be sitting within ISTA for a while with the car in position too, you guys already know, make sure your car is on a battery charger. I will be coming out the video and showing you how you can make a voltage stabilizer. They're much better than trickle chargers and ensure that your car will not die if you're programming. So I have had people ask me about that. I'm curious about that. I want a better solution. So right up here, we have our connection popped up. We have our VIN. We have our IP address for the cable, so we're just gonna press on it and we're gonna press set up connection. And bam, it's gonna pull all the data. This is normal, again, this is because we're not using a ICOM cable, so it can't read the voltage, which is fine. There's other things that are technically supposed to integrate with ISTA when using it. That's okay, um, again, we're using an ENET cable, we're not using an ICOM cable. Okay, so now that we've read everything, we have all the details about the car, we can even see the vehicle equipment. Like I mentioned, I said I don't know why I couldn't see it we should be able to see it yep so we can see everything that the car came equipped with now for the really cool part we can see the control unit we can see everything that has faults and this is kind of like the really cool part that everyone likes to see and we can see so we have a little key down here basically saying how they're all connected green obviously is good uh, yellow is faults. I know what all my faults are in my car they're nothing major um, they're really for my remote start system and they are for my CarPlay box. The remote start system ones I can actually fix. It's because it makes them blink and the car doesn't understand it. The CarPlay box throws one for some, I'll show you guys what it throws in a second. But basically we can see ones with fault, ones that are not responding and ECUs with programming aboard. And then we can see how they're all connected. So we have the gateway right here. We can highlight them. This is the central gateway module. We can see the serial number. We can see all sorts of data and then we can see how they're all connected to it. And we can see the different bus. We have the K3, K2, KCAN, the MOS, and then we can click display fault memory. And here are all our errors. Actually, this is a new one that wasn't coming up with Beamer code. I was looking for this one right here. My driver door lock was sticking my actuator and it's a very expensive actuator. I just ordered a new one to replace it because I thought it was failing and it is failing, but now that I have some codes to go with it. So basically these ones I know I can't fix. They're only for, because of my remote start system. This one I can't fix. It's my CarPlay unit. These ones I can, so let's click on it. Sticking switch on sensor one, door lock was operated too long, but voltage, we can see how long it was stored and we can see all sorts of stuff about it. So it's really helpful to see what's going on. We can check details, if there's any other details. We can see how many times it occurred. It says not currently present. When it occurred, that's so funny, we can see the time. That's actually hilarious, because that's exactly when it did occur. We can see the outside temperature at the time. Yes, it was very cold out, which I think is why it was actually sticking. So very cool. Then we can click calculate test plan and this will help figure out what is wrong with it. 
so that it will calculate the test plan for all the different codes it found. I know we can't find one for the headlights. Like I said, there's nothing to do and the display. So we can click here. Like I said, this is normal. And then this is going to tell us the procedure and things to try to fix this potential issue. And it'll tell us, hey, maybe the actuator needs to be replaced or what's going on. I think the actuator needs to be replaced. Everything right here basically has all the notes of things to try. Sorry, the program is a little bit slow because I am doing a screen recording too. So right here we can see, and then what it wants to do, the following are stored in driver start select, and it's gonna test the actual module. And it's operating too long, stored in 60 seconds. So if we press continue, it can actually test the module and come back, so let's press continue. So we can do a function test, we can check the actual lock, check to make sure it's working correctly. I know it's gonna work correctly, so there's no sense. Then we can end the test module with feedback, or we can press back, let's press back. Yeah, so there's, there's just no sense of me testing it because it's not currently doing it. But it's really cool that it allows you to do all these test plans and literally fix your car like you would be at the dealer and help figure out what is going on with the issue. So if you guys have a BMW, you definitely need ISTA. Like ISTA is a huge lifesaver. It is an awesome, awesome program. Like I said, it is a super powerful program too. So let's close out of this real quick. That is ISTA D. It's like I said, it's a very, very advanced program. It has some awesome, awesome capabilities you can do. We can even search codes. If you guys have a code that you have from something else, you can just throw in ISTA and ISTA will give you back feedback about it. There's so many things like I've only scratched the surface in this video of what you can do with ISTA. Like I said, if you're replacing your battery, if you're installing injectors, you want to redo your service history. ISTA takes care of all of it and it's simple to use a very nice GUI. Essentially, this is a replacement for Impa or EasyDIS or Progman, any of those super old programs. ISTA D is the future and it's what BMW uses. They actually call it ISTA Next. And it's amazing. It can do so many different things. I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. It's a great program to learn how to use. And like I said, if you guys are looking for it, I can help you out. Message me. But unfortunately, I cannot provide a video on it at this moment just because of the issues with BMW. But if you guys enjoyed this video and want to learn more about how to use ISTA, things ISTA can do, stuff like that, more coding videos, drop a comment below. Hit that subscribe button, guys. I'll continue to bring you some awesome content regarding BMWs and showing you guys how to fix BMWs yourself on a budget. So thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget to check out my ECS and Amazon affiliate link. I will also have a link down below to pick up this mod BMW adapter. Like I said, it's the best adapter, I think, for the money at a consumer level. So check them out in the link below, and I will catch you guys next time. Thank you.